Welcome to Engineering Studio with Dr. Muhammad Tahir. In this video, we are going to study about the built-up section and the design of lacing. In this video, we will study the benefits of lacings and the guidelines for the design of lacing. So, first of all, built-up section. So, built-up section for the for a compression members become efficient due to the fact that the slenderness ratio of the composite section can be made equal in both directions. For example, if we have a channel section, so in that case, the Rx value about will be sufficiently large than that of Ry value. So if the effective length in both the direction is same, so the slenderness ratio Rx will be less than that of Ry. So if we want to equalize the slenderness ratio about the both the axes x and y, so we can use a built-up section. So if we use a built-up section like this, so in that case we can also increase the value of Ry. So in case of built-up section, the value of Ry can be adjusted or can be increased than that of the individual member. And finally we can get a section which has equal slenderness ratio about both the axes. When the slenderness ratio of the member or the section is same about both the axes, so in that case our member will have equal strength about x and y axis. So this will economize our section. The spacing between the individual element may be varied to get the desired radius of duration. So we can get our desired radius of duration r y by adjusting the spacing between the members. For example, if we are using this W section to make a built-up section, so in that case the distance between their webs can be 1.5D to 1.6D to equalize Rx and Ry. And if we are using channel section back to back, so in that case their distance between their webs should be 0.6D to 0.7D and D is the depth of the section and if we are using this channel section to make a the box section or to make a built up section by arranging them by face to face so in that case the overall width should be equal to 0.9 d to d so in that case we can get a section with the radius of duration about y axis and radius of duration about x axis with almost same value. While making a built up section, we use lacing elements or type plates to connect these members or the members of the built up section. We use lacing element or type plates or battens. So the purpose of lacing bar is to make the entire component act as a single unit. So to connect these channel sections so that they can act as a single unit, we use lacings. When the structure member is consisting of two or more shapes and cover plates are not provided, then we use the lacing. Either we can use lacing, we can use tie plates, we can use battens, or we can use perforated cover plates. So if cover plates are are not used or battens as well as tie plates are not used so in that case we will prefer lacings. The next is what are the benefits or the function of lacing. So they provide resistance against the shear force developed by bending produced due to buckling or due to simultaneous action of bending moment. So if the column is subjected to bending because of the lateral load or the bending moment are because of the buckling so in that case shear forces will develop so these lacing element will resist those shear forces the second function of the lacing is to decrease the effective length of individual components so in case of built up section we have for example these components these angle sections so when we make a built up section the length of individual member will be sufficiently large if we consider individual member their slenderness ratio may exceed the limiting value of 200. So in that case to limit this slenderness ratio of the individual member so we need to use lacing elements or we need to use tie plates so that the 
unsupported length between the lacing points or the slenderness ratio of the individual section between these lacing points should be less than this limiting value 200. The third benefit of the function of this lacing is to hold the various parts parallel and at correct distance. So to keep these parts at the correct distance apart from each other we need this lacing. Otherwise, the next function is to equalize the stress distribution between the various parts. So for example we have a box section made up of angles, built up section made up of angles and if the load is acting near to this corner, so in that case this section or this angle will be stressed more than that of the other members or other channel section of the built up member. So in that case if we don't use the lacing element or tie plates this member will be continuously stressed with the larger value and the other member will remain unstressed or they will be under stressed. So when we use these lacing elements so what they do? So if the stress is more in this member, so this stress will be transferred to the second member by with the help of this lacing. So similarly at the later stages the stress will be transferred from this member or this element to the other elements because of the lacings. Fifth benefit is to allow wind to pass through reducing the wind pressure. So if we use perforated plate or cover plate, so it will cover this whole face and in that case there will be a huge wind pressure. But when we use lacing, so there will be empty space between the lacing elements, so wind can pass through that empty spaces and the wind pressure will be reduced. So here we have one note that area of lacing is not included in the composite area of the section. For example, we have the built up section and we have lacing over here. So when we calculate the area of this built up section, we don't consider the area of these lacings. As it is not continuously present throughout the length. Because it is not present throughout the length, it is at intermediate, intermittent stages, so don't, we do not consider the area of lacing. But in case of cover plates, which is present continuously throughout the length of the member, so in that case we can consider the area of cover plates to calculate the total area of the section total area of built up section. Next is types of lacing. So we have two types of lacing, single lacing and double lacing. So here we have single lacing and in case of double lacing so we have like this mean cross shape. We can also use battens instead of lacing. So these are rigid jointed members, plates, rigidly joined with the flanges of the members of the built up section. We can also use a combination of lacing and battens. So here we have lacing and this batten element, lacing and then batten element. Or we can use cover plates or perforated covers, cover plates to make the built up section. Next is the section used for lacing elements. So lacing, for lacing elements the most preferable section is this flat bar, we can also use the circular rod or we can use the angle section but the most preferable is this flat bar. Next is the guidelines for the design of lacing. So one by one we will discuss these guidelines. The first one is lacing element must be so placed that the individual part being connected will have slenderness value less than the governing slenderness ratio of the entire built up member. So if we see over here. So in between the lacing point, the slenderness ratio of individual member or of this individual member in between this lacing point, it should be less than the slenderness ratio of the built up section Rx and Ry are the governing value out of these two. So the lacing element should be so placed. So if this R is more, then we can reduce this spacing. So when this spacing will be reduced, the R, y, R value of this individual member will be reduced and we can satisfy the condition R should be less than Rx or Ry. Next is 
In riveted construction, the effective length denoted by LE of lacing bars for the determination of the permissible stress phi CFCR shall be taken as the length between the inner and reverse of a bar for single lacing. So if we see this bar, this is the lacing element. So the distance between the inner reverse, it is denoted by A and the effective length LE will be equal to A. To calculate the slenderness ratio and phi C FCR value. But if we are using double lacing, mean we have a lacing in the cross shape, so in that case LE will be equal to 0.7 A. In welded connection, the effective length shall be taken as the distance between the inner weld, inner end of the effective weld length connected connecting the lacing bar to the main member element for a single lacing and 0.7 for 7 for the double lacing. So again if the weld is up to here like this so from the end of the weld up to the other end of the weld we will have this length A and LE will be equal to A in case of single lacing and LE will be equal to 0.7 A in case of double lacing. What did it mean? We consider the length, effective length from the end of the effective weld up to the other end of the effective weld on the other side. Next guideline is slenderness ratio of the lacing element are limited to 140 for single lacing and 200 for double lacing. Mean LE over R minimum should be less than 140 for single lacing and should be less than 200 for double lacing. Double lacing should be used if the distance between the connecting lines between the lines of welds or fastener in a flange denoted by S is greater than 380. So if this S is greater than 380 then we will use double lacing otherwise we will use single lacing and this S is the distance between the fasteners in case of built up section. So if we use channel section like this. So one rivet will be over here and the other rivet will be over here. So the distance between these rivet will be S. And if we use the channel section face to face, so in that case one rivet over here and the other rivet over here. So this will be the S value. So if this S is more than 380 then we will use double lacing and if it is less than 380 we can use single lacing. And in case of single lacing angle should be more than 60 degree and in case of double lacing angle should be more than 45 degree and this angle is with vertical. We have the section like this, so this theta is with the vertical. And we have already studied effective length will be equal to A or 0.7 A for double lacing, standardness ratio less than 140 for single lacing and less than 200 for double lacing and single lacing will be used when S is less than 380 and double lacing when S is more than 380. Next guideline is lacing should be proportioned to provide a sharing strength normal to the axis of member equal to 2% of the total compressive strength of the member. So this is the member, this is its longitudinal axis. So the sharing strength normal to this member VU it should be equal to 2% of the capacity of this section the capacity of the section which is phi C PN. So we consider VU equal to 2% of phi C PN and the lacing element should resist this much shear strength. Next guideline is okay, this force should be equally divided into lacing elements at a particular cross section. For example, if we see this section like this, so here we have two faces. So if we use single lacing, so one lacing element will be on one side and the other lacing element will be on the other side. So if we talk about the force in one lacing are in the lacing element on the one side so that will be equal to VU over N. So it is written over here lacing bars 
may be under tension and compression alternatively however the compression in the bar is more critical and the design is performed for it so it means lacing element will be designed as a compression member so if n is the number of parallel planes of lacing shear on one lacing face will be equal to vu over n so here we have one plane and here we have the other plane so it means n will be equal to 2 so vu or the shear strength will be equal to in one lacing point or in the lacing element of one face will be equal to vu over n or vu over 2 the next guideline is for single lacing component of axial compression should provide the required shear component so if we talk about the force in the lacing element so we can visualize it like this so here we have a lacing element and it should resist the shear force equal to vu vu divided by n so if this is vu divided by n this angle is theta so this angle will also be theta so we can determine the force in this lacing member so the force in the lacing member fu if we divide this or we find the component of this fu it will be equal in the horizontal direction it will be fu sine of theta and this should be equal to this vu over n so from here we can find fu is equal to vu over n sine of theta so this fu will be the force in the lacing element so the force in the lacing element can be determined here this is the shear force that should be resisted by the lacing element so if the force in the lacing element is fu so if we divide it into horizontal component the horizontal component will be equal to fu sine of theta and that component should be equal to vu over n so from here we can write this equation so by simplifying this equation we can get fu is equal to vu over n sine of theta so this is for single lacing and if we have double lacing at any phase so in that case we need to divide this by two because the shear force or the force of the force of this lacing will be resisted by the two elements so we need to divide it by two so for the double lacing it will become vu over two time n sine of theta and n is again number of faces for example if we use double lacing and we have two faces for example it is a channel section two faces so in that case force in a single lacing element will be equal to vu over two for double lacing and two for two faces and sine of theta so our fu will be equal to this one in this scenario Okay, next guideline is the transverse center to center distance between the rivets or center of, centroid of the weld may be easily found from the known standard gauge distance of the individual element. For example, if we see this channel section, so we have the standard gauge length given in the ACI manual or AISC code. So when we know this gauge gauge length, the standard gauge length it means the weld or the river should be provided at this location so if we make a built up section by using these c section face to face so in that case one river will be over here at a distance g from this web and the other will be on this side from the web so the spacing between these two rivers will be equal to b mean the total width the total distance between the web minus g on one side and g on one side so it will be b minus 2g but if these are back to back so in that case if b is the distance between the webs so it will be b plus g on one side and g on the other side plus g plus g so it will be equal to b plus 2g so it is written over here so s is equal to b minus 2g for parts facing each other and b plus 2g for parts facing back to back Okay, the next is regarding the end plates the AISC specification states that the end type plates shall have a thickness at least equal to the 1 over 
50 the distance between the connection line of reverse bolts or welds and shall have a length parallel to the axis of the main member at least equal to the distance between the connection lines mean the thickness of tie plate should be greater than s over 50 s is the distance between the reverse or weld so s over 50 and the length of the tie plate should be equal to s so if we see this is the built up section so at the end we will have tie plates so the length of tie plate should be equal to s and its thickness should be s over 50 and its width should be equal to the width of the built up section next is the slenderness ratio l over r of the flanges between the lacing points should not be more than the three fourth of the overall slenderness ratio of the main member so if we talk about we have channel section if we see in the elevation so it will look like this so for example we have lacing element starting from here and up to here and the other one in this direction so for this flange flange between the lacing points So the slenderness ratio L over R of the flange between the lacing points. So the slenderness ratio of this flange between the lacing point should be less than 3 by 4th of the overall slenderness ratio of the main member. So the overall slenderness ratio of the main member whatsoever is that it is the slenderness ratio of the flange should be less than 3 4th of that value. Or uh, if we rearrange this equation we can get 4.61 L over TF so slenderness ratio will be equal to this one and if we rearrange it will become 4.61 L over TF should be less than R so R of this section the next specification is for flat bar for flat bar for lacing should have the following minimum width considering the minimum edge clearance from center of the reverse so the section of the lacing element should be such that it should have a clear distance from the center of the rivet or hole up to the edge it should be 1.5 d similarly on this side it should also be 1.5 d so it means the total width of the section should be equal to 3 d so this condition should be satisfied mean the section if we draw so the width of section should be 3 d so b minimum should be 3 d or more than 3 d Batten plates is defined as a rigidly connected plate elements used to join the two parallel components of a built up section. This is designed to transmit shear between the two components of a main member. So we can also use the battens as we have seen in the previous slides. So if we have built up section like this, so we can use battens like this. So these are rigidly connected. It means we should have at least two rivets parallel to the axis of the member or we should weld these battens with the flanges or with the elements of the individual section so double lacing shall be joined together at the intersection so if we are using double lacing so the lacing elements should be joined at the intersection at this point by using the rivet so in the next video we will cover the design flow or design flow chart for the built up section and design of lacing.